Hello, and welcome back to the Skype Sessions. Today, I'm speaking to John from Hillsdale College. John, how's it going? Going very well. Thank you for having me on, David. You're very welcome. Uh, would you just introduce yourself a little bit to the viewers? Who are you? What do you do for Hillsdale? Sure, yeah. Uh, so I actually came to Hillsdale several years ago uh, to work on my PhD in politics. So I'm actually a little unique about amongst your guests here on the show and the fact that I'm not a Lewis scholar myself. <laughs> I'm just a fan of C.S. Lewis. But um, I've been working on my PhD here. I'm actually in the process of writing my dissertation. And I started working for the online courses that Hillsdale offers and have been doing that for about a year now and been involved with a handful of the courses that we've released here recently. And I've just really been enjoying it. Mm. And for those who haven't come across Hillsdale before, where does this institution come from? What are their focuses? Where are you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Hillsdale College was founded in 1844 by a group of free will, free will Baptists. Um, and their goal was, it was a group of men and women who wanted to make the liberal arts education available to anyone who was willing and wished to learn. And that's kind of been the motivation behind the college ever since we're located in Southern Michigan. And, uh, one of the distinctive factors of it is that since it opened, it has, uh, not at all excluded students based on race or sex. It's been open to everyone. And that has, uh, been determined kind of by the fact that we believe that human beings are a certain type of thing that can participate in these things and that it allows you to, that through this education in the liberal arts, you can become not only a better person, but to, by doing that together, you can become friends. At, at the highest level, it is a certain type of friendship that develops from working together on these greatest questions of humanity and the perennial questions that Lewis himself tended to address, as well as some of the political questions and things that arise throughout your daily life. But um, so, yeah, they've been uh, going for quite a while now, since 1844. And one of the things that we're known for is putting out these online courses that uh, are free, available to the public, to anyone kind of carrying that mission even further now in the as we have the technology to do so of saying that anyone who is willing and wishes to learn these great questions and to put forth the time to study is able to. And so we've made, I think we currently have 34 courses available for free to anyone who wants to sign up for them that cover the whole range of subjects within the liberal arts. Mm -hmm. And as an Englishman who at some point this year is probably going to be naturalizing, I'm making sure that I'm going to go and do <laughs> your course on the constitution just to make sure I know what I'm signing up for. Uh, but a lot of Lewis fans will have heard of Hillsdale college because they will have done one of your CS Lewis courses. Now we're going to talk about a new course in the moment, mm -hmm. but, uh, for people that haven't even done the first course, uh, what, what is taught there and who does the teaching? Yeah, in the original C.S. Lewis course, which I believe was done in 2014, if memory is serving me correctly, uh, we had Dr. Larry Arn, the president of Hillsdale College, David Whalen, and Michael Ward, who is actually the professor for our new C.S. Lewis course as well. But we had the three of them kind of doing an introduction to Lewis and his writings and his significance, the role that he plays, because he is just such a great figure it sent from the 20th century in Christian thought and in just philosophical thought in general. If you're going to study seriously the liberal arts in any way, you should be reading Lewis. And so we had an introduction to him and they delve into a lot of great questions there, but approaching him from the side of an ethical philosopher and an imaginative apologist and a moral storyteller, how he fills all of these different roles and really get into Lewis's thought there as an introduction to how you should read him and how that will allow you to better understand and think about these great questions that he raises. They address a lot of different books there from the Abolition of Man to the Narnia Chronicles, the Space Trilogy, but they try to try to explain how his imaginative side and his storytelling combines with the rational side that you see in a lot of his more philosophical works. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite lecture in that series was the one by Dr. Ward, where he mm -hmm. deals with imagination and reason, mm -hmm. the organ of truth, the organ of meaning that, that blew my mind. Yeah, and yeah. he is the teacher for this new course, which you guys mm -hmm. are doing. So you've spoken about the one before, what's this one going to focus on? 
This one is specifically C.S. Lewis on Christianity, which I know is not all that specific. That's still just a huge <laughs> topic, but um, it's really trying to get at Lewis's personal experience and his thought that developed from that experience on Christianity and the Christian experience, how the Christian life should be lived and the difficulties that are involved with that. As Dr. Ward very well points out, it, it's not a life full of joy, according to Lewis. It's, it certainly is one that leads to joy and that is ultimately leads to the greatest comfort imaginable, but that starts in dismay and pain, actually, that you have to begin there. And then the process isn't just a straight line of ascent as much as we might want it to be. Lewis but, um, said that I didn't go to Christianity to, to make you feel good. I knew that a bottle of port <laughs> would do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and uh, he certainly has a very great way of drawing you into that as a reader, make it, helping you to understand that and having that not just be an intellectual understanding, but an actual moral understanding that gives you some sort of fortitude as you're trying to face those difficulties in your own life. Or at least I've found that to be as I've, like I said, I'm not a C.S. Lewis scholar. I'm just a fan of C.S. Lewis. And as we've been working on this course, I've been reading more and more of him. And I've really found it quite helpful for me for a lot of those reasons. Mm, we always say that we're amateurs because just an <laughs> amateur means one who loves and that that's, I think the best sort of person. I think you can be a professional and an amateur. I, yeah. I hope, I hope professionals never stop being amateurs. Yeah, uh, I certainly hope but, so. so is Dr. Ward teaching all of the, all of the lectures in this series? Yeah, there will be a brief introduction from Dr. Arne at the beginning of the series. And then there will be six lectures from Dr. Ward that cover, uh, the, I think the first one's on good and evil. He gets into the Tao and the abolition of man and how, I, I mean, I'm sure I know that you're familiar with Dr. Ward, but his it, it's somewhat a recapitulation of his, uh, mm -hmm, his after, humanity. Of after humanity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the idea that you can end up by stepping outside of the Tao, you can end up abolishing your own humanity. And then he actually ends up tying that back up in in the last lecture, which is on heaven and hell and the afterlife with that idea that, from Lewis that the doors of hell are locked from the inside, that that's actually your own responsibility there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and then we'll have a couple of lectures on Lewis's own conversion, how he experienced that and how that led to uh, his deeper reflection upon the Christian life as a whole. And especially we have a lecture dedicated to the role of in, that Lewis has in his own thought in the distinction between enjoyment and contemplation and how that plays a role throughout his conversion story and helping him to actually accept Christianity, but then also throughout the remaining lectures, how that influences his approach to the Christian life, how it's not just something to be studied and contemplated, but how the Christian spiritual life is something uniquely that needs to be enjoyed and participated in to be fully understood. Mm. And the key question is where do people need to go in order to register to be able to do this course? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the, all of our courses are listed online at online.hillsdale.edu. And you can go there to sign up and create an account. I believe there will be a link posted underneath this video to take you mm -hmm. directly to this course to be able to sign up and register for it. And again, the courses are all free. So you can start with this course or start with the earlier one. You, they're not necessarily connected. You don't have to have taken one to take the other. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I definitely recommend doing both. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. They're, they're both phenomenal courses. I can, I can speak especially to this one as I've been working on it for the last couple of months now, but <laughs> it's, it's just a phenomenal course. Every time that I delve back into it, I'm amazed by, at how well Dr. Ward is able to really get to the heart of CS Lewis and not just point to Lewis, but use that to point to what Lewis is talking about to those mm -hmm. different questions of the Christian life. Um, and, from there, you can go to any of our other courses. They're all available for free. You'll just have to put in an email address to create an account. And what are some of those other courses that you guys provide? Well, we have courses on politics, on history, on philosophy, other courses on religion, uh, literature. Uh, we have a course on math. Later this, this summer, we're going to be for filming a chemistry course. So we're going to add some sciences in there. But our mission here is to kind of radi out, radiate out the efforts that are going on at the college for our undergraduate students as well, and allow everyone to participate to some extent uh, in that 
same experience of getting into, to delve into these serious questions of the liberal arts. And so some of our most popular courses are, as you mentioned earlier, we have a course on the Constitution. We actually have a couple courses on the Constitution um, that are very well done and very popular. We've got some a course on uh, the Genesis story with Professor Justin Jackson, and uh, he actually just did a, another course at the, the beginning of this academic year on the David story, telling the story of King David and First and Second Samuel, which is <laughs> phenomenal. Uh, one of our more recent courses, we just released one on the history of the Roman Republic. So uh, we cover a whole range of things throughout the liberal arts. That's our goal is to make as much available as we can. Wonderful. And as you said, I'll put some links in the show notes. So people can get straight there and register for the Lewis course. Uh, and I'm going to be taking it as well. And I look forward to talking about it with all of our Patreon supporters on our Slack channel. Oh, thank you very much. John, thanks for coming on the show. And please join us next time when we'll continue going further up and further in. Cheers. Stories are like nets in which you, you catch for a moment something ineffable, something almost incommunicable. But he has communicated it. C.S. Lewis was just a master of language. He knew how to point beyond words. And the great thing about Lewis was that he was creative and imaginative, as well as being highly intellectual and analytical. He's so skillful at expressing the inexpressible. What you'll get in this course is an insight into how Lewis understood Christianity and wrote about it, both in his non-fiction and his fiction. He knows what it is like to have been an atheist, been an unbeliever, been a skeptic, and he knows what it's like to have come to faith. Lewis had thought his way into all corners of the Christian faith. Pain, joy, love, miracles, prayer, heaven, hell. And we're going to cover the, the whole gamut of, of experience. That's the great thing about Lewis's presentation of the faith. He, he makes it live, he makes it sing, he makes it move, he gives it colour. That, I think, is one of the things that people so love about Lewis. They feel like they're not just reading books, they're reading life, and life with a capital L. C.S. Lewis explained to the world in beautiful English, in common sense language, why Christianity is both good and plausible. When you come to Lewis's writings, it's like you've touched a live wire. You've suddenly got an electric shock because here's someone who really believes it and manages to communicate how much it means to him. I'm Michael Ward. This is C.S. Lewis on Christianity. Let's begin.